Okay, so we're gonna go over the zoom options as well as the select options in Rhino. These are super, super important if we wanna get our camera rotating and panning around the correct object as well as selecting things with easier access. So with the zoom, you can notice that if I just rotate my camera around, it's right now rotating around the steep plane grid. Actually, it's a little bit off somewhere here, but we have this point of rotation where our camera basically rotates around. Now, if I have an object all the way out here like that, and I wanna get a nice view of the object itself, you can see that when I rotate the camera, the object is all over the place because the center of the rotation is still somewhere in this space. Even if I try to rotate it, sorry, not rotate it, but like zoom in, it still has a very weird rotation angle over here. So in order to fix that, we can type in the zoom command and it'll ask for us to drag a window or use all these options. Now we can simply drag the window around the object to change where the, the camera zooms and pans around, uh, sorry, as well as rotate. But what I also like to use is the zoom and extent as well as zoom selected. So if we have extent, oh, sorry. Actually, before that, I'm just gonna make a copy of these. Okay, so zoom extent means it's gonna zoom into the middle of everything that exists in your model space. So if I use zoom extent like this, it's gonna zoom into everything uh, that is in my model space and it's gonna zoom right in the middle like that. Now, if I wanna zoom into one particular object, maybe here, then I can use the zoom selected or S options and it's gonna change the camera to zoom, pan and rotate around this singular object. Now, those two are the ones that I use probably 99% of the time you can play around with all the other ones. I honestly don't know what most of them do, but uh, Zoom Extent as well as Zoom Selected has gotten me through a lot, a lot of projects. So uh, a shortcut for Zoom Selected is ZS and a Zoom Extent Z. Okay, another thing we're gonna go over is the select options. So I'm just gonna make a rectangle really quick and we're going to offset this by a distance of 200. That looks good. So uh, if we use the planar surface command, we're going to make a surface. But if you want to select the surface and maybe want to extrude it, maybe you want to cut it in half, anything like that, sometimes it's really hard when these two lines are super thin and you have to zoom all the way in just to select your surface. So what we can do to select the last thing that we just created is we can actually type select last like that. And this will change the selection to what we just created, which was a surface that was uh, made by using planar surface on the two curves. Now there's also many, many different other selects. Uh, just to give an idea, if I type select here, these are all the selects that you can, you can use in Rhino. Pretty crazy. I honestly don't know what most of these do. I usually just use the select last, uh, but another one, that may be really useful is if maybe this is a different layer and it's, it's a different color uh, along with this one, then we can actually click on this and then select color like that. And I'll select everything that's the color. Uh, if we want all the curves in the scene, we can type select curve and it'll select all the curves and so on. So it's good for selecting everything of the same kind. But other than that, I really like to use select last uh, because as I said, sometimes it's really hard to zoom in and select what you just made. So you can use select last to uh, basically uh, use that in order to transform your next command. Also, when you make a bunch of different things, uh, like you're, you're doing them in batches and batches, it's also a good idea to use select last just because you can select every single one of them uh, at once instead of clicking and selecting all of them.